What was it about the Palmetto State that pulled you back? And uh, you've been here now, if you said you, you matriculated to Citadel in 64, right. that's 40, uh, Three yeah. years, Ken, not to date you there. I'm sorry. Right. That's, well, uh, uh, I graduated in 68 on the 1st of June and got married on the 2nd of June no. uh, to a young lady from Conway, from South Conway. Carolina. So okay. uh, uh, having uh, met her in right. Charleston and looking at the Conway Myrtle Beach area and comparing that to the outskirts of Baltimore, uh, I made up my mind where to live in about a half a second, you know, so, uh, uh, so I've been here in Horry County ever since. You've been here in Horry County since, since 1968. Uh, almost uh, 40 years, That's 40 right. years next yeah. year. That's yeah. amazing. So it's most of my life I've been right here. More than half your life. That's fascinating. What about some of the big changes that have occurred here in the last 40 years, Kent? Does anything really stick out oh, in your mind? Oh, my goodness, yes. Tremendous changes, and uh, especially in, the in, county. in yeah. real estate. Yeah, I yeah. have been... Uh, uh, all over uh, Horry County, and I remember when there was a great distinction where Conway stopped and Myrtle Beach started along Is 501. That? I remember when there was uh, little more than pine trees between Conway and Myrtle Beach, and of course now there's a tremendous amount of growth oh, all yeah. over the county. Just, all over uh, the county. I remember when there was a lot more uh, wildlife habitat, a lot more uh, forestation and things like that, and now uh, all that has uh, has changed, and uh, the growth has been uh, tremendous in Horry County. You've had a great appreciation for real property over the years. I know you had your own company for almost two decades, but have really gotten into real estate right. in the last 15 years or so. Also co-founded and uh, and owned a, a business brokerage for years. Uh, that's correct. Uh, uh, I had my own corporation from 1977 to 1995. I actually uh, became licensed in real estate in 1984 yes. uh, and was just going to do that as a, uh, a part-time thing. The main reason that I uh, took the course was to learn about real estate because sure. I thought of investing. Uh, and uh, when I did get my license. A friend of mine was a forester and a broker in charge of a real estate company and I had an opportunity to get a license and hang my license with him as broker right. in charge. And uh, he taught me a lot about land, about farms, wetlands, uh, uh, timber and so forth. And uh, that's always been my first love. Mm -hmm. uh, so I continued part-time in real estate. I became a broker in 1987. Twenty years uh, ago. But yeah. I only did it part-time until I closed the corporation down in 1995. That's right. when I went into real estate full-time. Sure. Now, uh, prior to that, in the early 90s, there were five of us who started uh, Sunbelt Business Brokers mm -hmm. as a... Uh, way to help people buy and sell businesses in the commercial uh, end of the real estate. Mm -hmm. And then three of us sold out to the other two. Right. And uh, that company is still in existence to this day. Absolutely. These folks at Bell & Bell are going strong early in the morning, yeah, uh, yeah, early part of the week. It's great to hear their, the, the uh, speaker going off there. You know, you think about all your time here, and of course, real property and the changes that have occurred, the excitement for you. And, and I think for a short while, Ken, are you, and you maintain some involvement there, helping to make sure other folks understand the basics. You mentioned back in 84, taking a class to learn more, to, to look into real estate investing. I know you joined uh, the Fortune Real Estate Academy to help them grow and to make sure that folks had the same opportunities as you to learn the basics of real estate and as well as very advanced stages. I think you mentioned you know a lot of brokers in town because you've taught a lot of them. Yeah, actually I have. Uh, uh, Harold Swanner uh, started Fortune Academy, or actually he First, bought, uh, right. bought Fortune yeah. Academy back in 1995. It was started by a man named Otis Brandt, and uh, I had taken my classes uh, back when Otis was uh, the owner. the owner and instructor there. Uh, but Harold uh, Swanner and I both served on a technology committee for the Board of Realtors uh, back around the year 2000. Sure. And, uh, so in 2001, Harold and I got to talking about the possibility of my teaching some uh, real estate classes because I had done some training for some other real estate companies. Sure. And I had uh, taught in the Horry County school system right after I got out of the Army. Uh, so I started 
started teaching some real estate classes, and that's evolved over about a six and a half year period uh, to where I teach the pre-licensing classes for people who want to get a license. I also teach the post-licensing classes uh, that are required for people with a first year sales license to yes. get a permanent license. And then I also teach the broker classes uh, for people who want to become a broker and the designation classes, uh, for example, the accredited buyer representative uh, mm -hmm. uh, class, I'm now certified to teach that, uh, as well as the continuing education classes that all licensees have to take uh, eight hours of every two years. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the teaching of those for the six and a half years, I have uh, taught literally thousands of people in wow. these classes. And uh, it's very interesting to me to see someone come along right off the street right. and be in my first year sales class, then come back and take the post licensing classes, right. then come back and take the bro uh, broker classes and uh, start their own companies and do very, very well. And then sure. I still continue to see them when they have to take their continuing education classes. So it's been a lot of fun for me. <laughs> I I've love met it. a lot of people. You're covering a lot of bases there, Ken. Yeah, really. My Lord. Yeah. Doing this Realtor of the Week profile. And as you said, of course, the opportunity to highlight folks with which you either taught or worked with Travis Miller and Cecil Granger, folks that you understand their business inside and out, right. as well as folks you've held train you mentioned or, or didn't mention. You mentioned off camera that Marvin also serves as president of the Coastal Carolina Association of Realtors. That's correct. Uh, Mar Marvin is the current president of the Coastal Carolina's Association of Realtors, uh, as well as being a broker in charge with Prudential Burris and Chapin. Right. Uh, so he has uh, been on uh, different committees through the years as well. He has served uh, uh, on the legislative committee and, and mm -hmm. some other committees as mm -hmm. well. How do you go about deciding? There's so many realtors in the area, Ken. How are you going about deciding? And of course, I, I assume that's a little bit of a joint effort. And I don't want to put it all on you, but there's a lot that's involved in deciding all those realtors in the area, who you're going to profile on a weekly basis. Well, it, it is tough, and it's, it's hard to decide which one to do. So. Sure. Uh, there are a lot of them that are yeah. very good candidates for Absolutely. the Realtor of the Week. You could do one uh, Realtor so, of the Day. Yeah, yeah, basically, because there are so many out there. So uh, we'll get around to a lot of them good. over time. Uh, but I, I try to get a cross-section of people, people who are giving back to the community, people who uh, are in the different areas of readership for the Myrtle Beach Herald. Very good. So point. we're interested sure. in, in the Coastal Carolinas Association. Association of Realtors, people who are in Horry County, right. uh, North Myrtle Beach, Myrtle Beach proper, uh, the south ends of sure. uh, Myrtle Beach, uh, as well as into Georgetown County as well. Where so. the Herald has a strong foothold, very definitely. Yes. It's very smart yeah. to highlight those territories. And as you said, so many of them are involved very actively in their communities, whether it's working for the Sockasee Recreation Commission or uh, helping the YMCA, the Grand Strand YMCA. Uh, we had an editorial that's in newsstands today about the excitement of helping this last million dollar push for the YMCA for that new green facility they're planning out there on the bypass. In addition, a great piece in our business journal this week about uh, this last million dollar push. So a lot of focus there an opportunity to wrap around great uh great sources and folks that are doing a lot in the community. And uh, with Cecil Granger, for example, he was uh, uh, chairman of the building committee when we built the new Coastal Carolinas Association of Realtors building, the Charles Brindell building, Charlie right. Brindell building, right. uh, on the old Air Force Base. So the uh, the growth of the Air Force Base has just been phenomenal as well. So oh, yeah. uh, there are a lot of things going on. Uh, there are a lot of realtors who in, are involved in not only the things that are happening from a real estate perspective, but also other things that are happening to the benefit of the county and the different communities within the county. You mentioned, of course, all those designations, and there's so many, whether it's, uh, I think on your, uh, on your name tag there earlier this morning, I saw ABR and maybe GRI, Graduate Real Realtors Institute. That's the correct. ABR, Kent, uh, of course, you've been an ABR. and I think I was probably the first one in Horry County to become an ABR. Uh, that was back in 1997, mm -hmm. uh, 96 or 97, uh, when uh, the... 
buyer representation was relatively new at that right. uh, at that particular time, and they came out with that uh, designation uh, where there was a course that you had to take, and then you have to represent a certain number of buyers uh, in order to achieve that designation. That's tremendous, absolutely, Ken. You know, you're, have your family stayed here in the area? Your three kids are they still here? Uh, no, my son is still in the area. He works in the Conway Myrtle Beach area. I have an older daughter, Kim, uh, whose husband is in the Air Force, and uh, uh, they're in uh, Oklahoma, in Moore, Oklahoma. He is uh, stationed at Tinker Air Force Base. Uh, it's a right comical thing. They were uh, in Biloxi, Mississippi, stationed at Keesler Air Force Base, and were transferred to uh, to Oklahoma three weeks before Katrina hit. No, wow. so they so they left the hurricane place right. to the tornado place. Oh, no. So uh, uh, then I have a daughter Teresa who lives in uh, in Charlotte. And uh, then, of course, my son lives here locally. Absolutely. Those are great words. Thanks so much okay. for being with us this morning, Ken. I'm Thank sorry we've run much. out of time. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina people with Kent Strobel, broker in charge of Herald Real Estate, coming up next. Think of that trip down to the Palmetto State 43 years ago, the excitement for a guy up there around Baltimore heading down to become a plebe down at the Citadel, the excitement and, and those early days, and you heard Kent talk about it, the difficulty at times going back to reunions, knowing that he may or may not see somebody who he had been tight with for over a four-year period. It's a tough thing, and life can be difficult, albeit you heard him say in that same, uh, after he finished up, it took that half a second to make the determination that Horry County was going to be the right place to be. He's dug in, he's dug in deep and made a commitment in the community 23 years ago as a real estate agent, 20 years ago as a broker. Now he's making a difference at Herald Real Estate. Check him out online at heraldrealestate.com. Click on the About Us. You can also go there and click on the links and see the incredible depth of Herald Real Estate and the opportunity to really get out and make a difference, not only here, but all over the country, uh, making a difference every day, just like so many of the folks he's profiling with his weekly Realtor of the Week focus in the Myrtle Beach Herald. Check him out at heraldrealestate.com.